to sleep. May Grace Christmas by Georges Simenon, adapted for radio by John Petherbridge. May Grace Christmas. Happy Christmas, dear. Happy Christmas, Nick Day. Mm. Would you still be in bed? You usually have a lie in on Christmas morning. I was awake, so I thought I might as well get up. I was going to bring you breakfast in bed. I just made the coffee, and I've been out to get the croissant. We could eat in here. Lovely to see the children out playing on their new bicycles. Yeah, we won't get a moment's peace all day. What with the sound of bike bells and tin drums and <laughs> pop guns and all the rest of the paraphernalia. Oh, don't be such a misery. Mm. Come and sit down and have your coffee before it gets cold. Maigret? Do you know those women? What women? Those two down there staring up at our flat. Oh, that's Mademoiselle Doncourt. She lives opposite. And the younger one? She lives in the same block. I don't know her name, but I often see her out in the street with a young girl. I think... Somebody told me she wasn't hers, but she's a delightful child. I buy her sweets sometimes when she's out there playing on her own. Come to think of it, I haven't seen her lately. Well, if anything's happened to her, my guess is you'll soon find out. They look as if they're coming into the building to see me. Oh, I hope not. I haven't cleaned anywhere. Oh, you and your housework. You don't understand. Flat looks perfectly all right to me. And you haven't started your breakfast. Oh, and is the inspector in? If he's busy, it doesn't matter. Yeah, I'm Mademoiselle Doncourt, and this is my neighbour, Madame Marta. Hello. We are awfully sorry to disturb him, but something rather funny happened last night, and I thought it was our duty to tell the inspector about it. I'm sure there's a perfectly simple explanation. You'd better come in. Yeah, I'll thank you. I told you the inspector wouldn't mind. He's always helping people out. It's very good of you to see us like this. Oh, you've already said that twice. So, tell me if I've got this right. You two are neighbours. We live across the corridor from each other. Mm. And you, Madame Martin, live with your husband Jean and his niece Colette. Yes. Oh, her mother was killed in an automobile accident two years ago, and it, it, it sent her father, Jean's brother, Paul, a bit funny. Mm. You see, he he blames himself for the accident. Well, it was his fault. He was drunk at the time. And since then, Colette has lived with us. So you, Mademoiselle Doncourt, had just come back from Mass this morning. Yes, it must have been about half past seven. You might have seen the light in my window. Yes, go on. I wanted to give Colette a few little presents, nothing very expensive, just little things I got for her. Colette broke her leg a couple of months ago and has been confined to bed with it in plaster ever since. So at about eight o'clock, I went across the landing and Madame Martin let me in to see her. Oh, happy Christmas, Colette! Look what Father Christmas left in my flat for you. I saw him. Who did you see? Father Christmas. Oh, don't be so stupid. Father Christmas only visits little girls when they're asleep. <laughs> but I did. I did. He had a white beard and a red coat. Though sometimes, Colette, you go too far. But I did see him. I did. Look, stop it, Colette, or I'll give you a good slap, even if it is Christmas. But I did see 
see him. Look where he left me. And with that, she lifted the bedclothes and showed us this magnificent doll. You didn't give her the doll, did you? <laughs> On my husband's salary, I did buy her a much smaller one from the Gallery Lafayette, but of course that won't be nearly good enough for her now. I, I'm sure it's Jean or Paul playing some sort of trick. Was your husband home last night? No, he's away working in the Dordogne. He's a sales representative for Zenith Watches. Do you know where he's staying? Uh, Hotel de Bordeaux in Bergerac.、Mm -hmm. Have you told him what happened? We don't have a phone. He'll be back for the New Year. I'll tell him then. Colette told us that after Father Christmas had given her the doll, he told her to go to sleep. But she only pretended and saw him crouch down and lift up some of the floorboards. <sighs> That child has got too much imagination. You didn't hear anything. No.、Hmm. Oh, Colette's room has two doors, one of which opens directly onto the landing. Apparently, her room used to be let out separately.、And、that door was locked. Well, of course it was. What do you take me for? <laughs> well, I'm sorry, but really, I mean, she may not be my child, but I do my best to look after her. Was there any sign of the lock being forced? Well, I don't know. Then I'm not a famous police inspector, am I? Was there a hole in the floor? Oh no, no, not a hole exactly. But it did look to me as if someone had prized up some of the floorboards and then put them back down. Tell me, Madame Martin, do you have any idea what might have been under there? No, Inspector. No idea at all. No, Inspector. Have you and your husband been living in the flat for long? <sighs> Since we got married five years ago. And do you know who lived there before you? Jean lived there on his own. Did you go out last night? No, Inspector. Any visitors? Inspector. Were there? I、don't receive visitors when my husband is away. No, of course not. And this morning you found nothing missing. Nothing at all. Who's looking after Colette now? <sighs> She's playing with her new doll. Well, I can't stay in all the time. I have to go out sometimes, if only to do the shopping. If I know Madame is out, I'll pop my head round the door and check that Colette is all right.、Mm. Does her father Paul see her often? When it suits him, and he's not too drunk. Do you know where he lives? Well, we've, we've seen him in the Bastille area begging, but I don't know where he lives, if anywhere. Mightn't he have dressed up as Father Christmas and visited Colette? It, it's the only explanation. But Mademoiselle here insisted that we should come and see you. Why would he have bothered to lift the floorboards?、Oh, probably looking for a bottle. Quite frankly, knowing Paul as I do, I'm not that worried. Are you expecting him today? Oh, I never expect him. If he's been drinking, he won't show his face. At least I'll say this for him: he always tries to make himself sober when he sees Colette. Do you mind if I come across and have a little chat with Colette? Oh, I've told you everything. Yes, all the same, I'd like to have a word with her. I can't stop you, can I? <laughs> I'll be across later this morning after I've had some breakfast and a shave. We will see you later, Inspector. Thank you so much for seeing us, Sorry, Inspector. Now, operator. Police headquarters, Sirite. You're through. Sirite. That you, Lucas? Um, the yes, chief. You busy? Just the usual Christmas Day stuff. Good. I'd like you to do something for me. Yes, chief. I want you to find out where a certain Paul Martin. Alcoholic of no fixed abode, spent last night. Apparently, he often hangs out in the Bastille district. So start with the local police stations and flop houses. Got it. And find out what his brother Jean did last night, and whether he received any phone calls or telegrams. He's staying at the Hotel Bordeaux in Bergerac. Something happened. A little girl claims to have seen Father Christmas. Smells good. Oh, close the door! I don't want the smell of onions all over the flat. I don't think Colette is in any danger. Do no, I don't think so. 
It'd be awful for her without a proper mother. You'll be back for lunch. Oh, yes, yes. I don't expect to be over there very long. Um, can I ask you something? Yeah, of course you can. What is it? Are you happy? What a question. Oh, but, but are you? What's brought this on all of a sudden? Oh, just thinking of children like Colette, who don't have proper parents, when there's so many of us who long for the chance to. <laughs> Doesn't matter. It's just me being silly. You'd better go and speak to Colette. Mm. Oh, oh mademoiselle. She's gone out shopping, Inspector. Oh. It's all right. I've got the key. Madame Martin asked me to keep an eye on Colette until she returns. Mademoiselle Duncan! Yes, it's me, Colette. Hello, dear. I bought this nice gentleman to see you. Are you really a policeman? I told her about you. <laughs> yes, I'm Inspector Megri, but there's no need to be frightened. I'm not frightened. Do you like my new dog? Yeah. Is that the one Father Christmas brought you last night? It's the one I was telling you about. Yeah. Do you mind if Colette and I have a little chat on our own? Oh, of course not, Inspector. I know how you work. Mm. I've read all your cases in Le Tong. Oh, really? Mm. That's the door he must have come through. You can see some scratches by the latch. Are you going to take some fingerprints? Uh, we'll see. Well, if you need me, I'll be in the kitchen. <laughs> Do you think it was Father Christmas who came to see me last night? Oh, I'm sure it was. Maman Lorraine doesn't think so. Do you like Maman Lorraine? Yes, monsieur. And your papa? I've got two papas, Papa Paul and Papa Jean. When did you last see Papa Paul? I don't remember. He said he would bring me a special present for Christmas. I think he must be poorly. Is he often poorly? Yes, because you know when he's poorly, he doesn't come and see me. And what about Papa Jean? He's away now, but he said he would be back for New Year. He's going to get a job in Paris, and then he won't ever have to go away ever again. And you'll like that? Oh, yes. Mm -hmm. He's nice to me. <laughs> I expect you've had lots of visitors since your accident. No, we never have visitors. Oh. It's ever so boring being in bed all the time. And Maman Lorraine, does she ever have visitors? I don't think so. Never? Only the gas man and the electricity man, but they don't count, do they? No one else. Um, the insurance man, does he count? When did he come? He came two times. The first time, can you remember when that was? The day after I hurt my leg. Mm. Did you see him? No, but I heard him talking to Maman Lorraine. Did you hear what they said? No, I could only hear their voices. Hmm, that's all right. But what about the second time? Do you remember when that was? A few days ago. He started shouting and I got frightened. Mm. And Maman Lorraine came into my room and said it was all right. And I must go to sleep. Yeah. Do you think I'll be able to keep my new doll? Oh, I should think so. Mama Lorraine gave me a new doll, but it's not nearly as good. She said she's going to take it back to the shop because she says I don't need two dolls. Is this where Father Christmas made a hole in the floor? I think so. You see, he was going to give the little boy who lives underneath us his Christmas present. Well, let's have a look. Can you see him? Mm. Oh. You won't find anything down there, oh. Inspector. Madame Martin. She been good. She's been most helpful. I'm sorry I missed you, but when I got back, I realised there were a few bits and bobs I had to get. I know most of the shops will be closed later. Oh, it's you. Well, who did you think it'd be? I, I was in your kitchen. Good, good. Now, would you mind sitting with Colette while I have a chat with Madame Martin? 
anything to help you, Inspector. Well, can we get this over with quickly? I've the shopping to put away and lunch to cook. You can do that while we're talking, can't you? Bye. Bye bye. You know, of course, she's in love with you. Who is? That old maid, Mademoiselle Dunker. Must have made her Christmas having an excuse to visit you in your flat. Where did you do your shopping? Oh, just locally. The Rue de Chemin Vert and the Rue Amelot. And you've been away nearly two hours? Never. Mademoiselle Dancourt said you went straight out as soon as you got back from seeing me. Oh, not straight out. It may have escaped your attention, Inspector, but I was not wearing these clothes when I came to see you. But you left here as soon as you'd changed? Yeah. If you say so. I admit I didn't rush back, but there's no crime in that, is there? Besides, I knew she was keeping an eye on Colette. What did you buy? Well, see for yourself, Inspector. Three tins of sardines, ham, butter, potatoes. Satisfied? But there are sardines on the shelf. Well, I thought I'd stock up. Do you go out to work? What with having to look after Jean and the flat and Colette? What about before you were married? Of course I worked. I had to earn my living like everyone else. Where did you work? Lots of places. I, I, I did clerical work. What's this got to do with anything? I don't know. Look, if you don't mind, I'd like to start preparing lunch. It was you, Madame Martin, who came over to see me. Only because she insisted. You don't like Mademoiselle Doncourt? I don't like people who can't mind their own business. And she doesn't? Any excuse and she's round here on some pretext or other. I only have to put my head round the front door and she's there asking with that simpering smile of hers whether I'm going to leave Colette all on her own. You resent looking after Colette. Do you have children, Inspector? No, madam. Well, you wouldn't understand. You know, we didn't have to take Colette in after the accident. But you did? Yes. Uh, uh, and I do everything I can for that girl. I, I, I treat her just as I would my own daughter. I'm sure you do. Just one last question. Have you the name of your insurance agent? My insurance the agent? The one who came to see you a few days ago. Oh, him. Oh, you have been doing your detective work. Do you know his name? No. I wasn't going to do anything like that without Jean being here. He's been here before. Yes, but I'm sure you know that. He came twice. He, he was most persistent. Is that all now? For the time being. Now I'd like a few words with Mademoiselle Doncourt. Mademoiselle, your inspector wants to talk to you. Please, keep your coat on, Inspector. I know it's not very warm in here, but living on my own, I don't use this room very often. Tell me, Mademoiselle Doncourt. Have you recently received any visits from an insurance agent? I don't think so. Uh, uh, well, let me think. Uh, no. No, I'm quite sure no one like that has come around here for a long time. You don't like Madame Martin? Let me just say that if I had a son, I would not want her as my daughter-in-law. Is she unfaithful to her? Oh, no, 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 nothing like that, no, no. Well, if she is, she's very discreet about it. So there's never been any scandal attached to her since she moved here? Well, not that I can think of. Apart from that business of her job, but, well, you really can't call that scandal. I thought she didn't work. Oh, she doesn't now, but she did for the first few months after she was married. What happened? From what I gather, she was working at this jeweler's shop in the Palais Royal for a man called... Oh, well, let me think. Um, Monsieur Laurier, yes... That's right, that was his name, Laurier. Anyway, one day she went to work in the normal way, only to find the shop locked and no sign of Mr. Laurier. And he hasn't been seen since. Do you think his disappearance had anything to do with what happened last night? I don't know. But I'm sure I'll find out. Do it. Me great. It's me, Chief. 
Ah, right, Lucas, what have you got for me? We had a bit of luck with Paul Martin. Yes. Right, um, last night after Christmas dinner at the Salvation Army barge at Pont Neuf, he went to a nightclub in the Latin Quarter, where he worked as doorman for a few hours. Uh, at about two this morning, he finished there and went to a bar, mm. got drunk and was picked up by the local police at around four. Oh, yes. He had only just been released when I contacted them. Apparently, he still had a few francs left in his pocket, so the likelihood is that he's probably back on the drink. Yeah. His usual bar is Cher Bernard in the Place de la Bastille. Not far from you, sir. Yeah, good. What about his brother, Jean? Do you find out if he received any calls last night? Apparently, he did receive a call at his hotel late last night. But by the time he reached the phone, the caller had rung off. Mm. The receptionist reckons that someone was checking up on whether he was actually at the hotel. Mm. Anything else? He's coming back to Paris. Apparently, he got wind of my inquiries and became quite agitated. He's catching a train which should get him into Paris at around 11 tonight. Right. Oh, one other thing I want you to do. Yes, Chief? Find out from police records what you can about a man called Laurier. He disappeared suddenly from his jewellery shop in the Palais Royal five years ago. Right, Chief. Mm. <sighs> now. Your sister never fails with her plum brandy. <laughs> it must be awful for a girl of that age to have to spend Christmas Day in bed. Still thinking about her? Well, it must be. Mm -hmm. Any idea how much longer she's going to have her leg in plaster? No, I don't know. I didn't ask. Why? Well, if she's been laid up in bed for two months, I don't imagine it'll be much longer before she's up and about on crutches. And free to leave her room? Yes. Yeah. Why? Well, it means that anybody wanting to give the room a thorough search would only have to wait till then. Perhaps there was some reason they couldn't wait. Yes, exactly. Jean Martin would have been back from his rounds in a couple of days. Any idea of what they were looking for? No, I don't know. But if they didn't find whatever it was last night, then my guess is that it won't be long before they try again. Mm. Right. Where are you going? To see Paul Martin. This afternoon? Mm. You said we could go and see the new Jean Gabin at the Grand Rex. I'm sorry. On Christmas Day? <laughs> I'm sorry. I know you've got your job. It's just that I was so looking forward to it. Well, perhaps we can go tomorrow when this business is all cleared up. That's what you always say? Mm. Make sure you wrap up warm. Yep. Looks like it's going to snow. Beer. Paul Martin here. Who wants him? That him over there by the billiard table? If you say so. <clears throat> Here's your beer. Hmm. Uh, you Paul Martin. Oh, is that your beer? You want one? Beer for my friend over here, please. Another beer. I know you. You're Inspector Megre. <laughs> you live opposite my brother. Right. Something's happened to Colette. No, no, no. What's happened to her? What's calm happened to my down, poor Colette? Calm down. Nothing's happened to Colette. Oh. I'm so hopeless. So hopeless. I can't even look after my own kid. Not even at Christmas. I'm so awful. One beer. Oh. Last night a man dressed as Father Christmas got into her room. Are you sick? It, no, it's all right. Nothing happened. The man did not touch cut. He gave her an enormous doll and then proceeded to look under the floorboards for something. Why? That's what I'm trying to find now. Tell me, is your brother Jean the sort of man... To hide something under the floor by something he didn't want his wife to know about? Jean doesn't have any secrets from Lorraine. He wouldn't dare. <laughs> you don't like her very much, do you? <sighs> My poor wife said it was very convenient, but Lorraine married a man who was away so much. <laughs> oh, perhaps I shouldn't have left Colette with her. Colette's all right. I was going to see her today. <laughs> My own... Kid on Christmas Day and I'm drunk. Well, sure, 
I should have drowned with my wife in the accident and then everybody would have been you happy. You know that's not true. Oh, you can say that. But you don't know what it's like being on the streets at Christmas. It's so cold. There's nowhere to go. So you go into a bar for a bit of warmth and someone takes pity on you, buys you a drink, then another. And then when you've had a few drinks, it hits you. And you remember, you were going to stay sober and see your kid. But once again, you've failed and you feel so awful. You go on drinking. Do you want to see Colette? I can't. Not like this. Uh, you can come back to my flat and get yourself cleaned up. Can I? Oh, you know, I'm not always like this. Once I went to see a doctor for advice. <laughs> But when I went back again a few days later, there was a big queue and he told me he hadn't time to talk to me. I, I had to go to a special clinic. And you never went. <laughs> come on, come on, let's go. Listen, I come did on. try. Yeah, I did. Come on. I can be sober. I can be a good one. Do you think Colette will be all right with him? Yes, I'm sure she will. What I don't understand is why, with a lovely young daughter like Colette, he allows himself to get into such a state. I told you about the accident. Oh, yes, I know. It must have been awful for him, but even so, I simply can't imagine any circumstances which would stop me looking after my child if we had one. We're in here. Do I look all right? You look fine. I put your razor back on the shelf. Uh -huh. Is that plum brandy? <laughs> my sister made it. She lives in Alsace. I like plum brandy. Louise has just made you some coffee. I'll, I'll pour you a cup. Black? Uh, yes. Yes, of course. There we are. Thank Ooh. you. Ah. Look, when you give this to Colette. What is it? A gold thimble. Oh. Oh, she loves things like this. Oh, you can't see her empty-handed on Christmas Day. <laughs> You've been so kind to me. I don't know what to say. Oh, no, you don't have to say anything. Just finish your coffee and go and see her. Who is it? Happy Christmas, Lorraine. It's me, Paul. I've come to see Colette. You know where she is. Papa! Colette? Papa! Oh, Colette. Happy Christmas. Come in, Lucas. Take a seat. Thanks, Chief. You look frozen. Oh, it's snowing. Yeah. Look, Brandy, warm you up. Oh, thank you. Mm. I dug out the report on Laurier's disappearance. And? Well, it's all very odd. He just seems to have vanished off the face of the earth. Yeah. He left his house to go to work as normal one morning, and that was the last anyone ever saw of him. Anything else in the report? Well, yes, there is. <sighs> Apparently, Monsieur Laurier wasn't the respectable businessman his neighbours in the Rue Mazarine thought he was. His shop had a thriving sideline in selling obscene photographs and prints, <sighs> though nothing was ever proved. But that may have been because the investigation was rather perfunctory. There were well-known public figures amongst his customers. <laughs> and Madame Martin? Uh, she was questioned after his disappearance, but she claimed to be as mystified as everyone else. However, her old landlord from before she was married recognised Laurier from a photograph and said he used to stay the night there with her sometimes. Uh, but apart from that, nothing. Good. Well, look, when you've finished your brandy and thawed out, I want you to find out if any taxi driver picked up Madame Martin from around here at about nine o'clock this morning. Any other day I'd probably be asking the impossible, but apart from a few family and church visits, they won't have been very busy today.
Sorry, mate, I'm off duty. Police. You're Maygrave's boy, aren't you? I've seen your picture in the paper with the inspector. Were you working this morning? I was here, if that's what you mean. What's this all about, then? The inspector doing one of his famous cases, is he? Did you pick up a woman in or near the boulevard Richard Lenoir at around nine this morning? Or the one with nice legs. If you say so. The inspector needs you to identify her. Oh, give it a rest, mate. It's Christmas. I'm just about to go home. It's important. You try telling that to the wife. She isn't happy me working Christmas as it is. Oh, whop in. I can see I won't get any peace till I get this sorted out. Where did you take this woman this morning? Uh, she got me to stop outside a travel goods shop where she brought a cardboard suitcase. Then we went to the Gardu you know. She went in and came back ooh, 15 minutes later without it. Since I was still on the rank, she got me to drive her back to where I picked her up. She was most insistent I didn't drive down the boulevard Richard Lenoir. I dropped her in the Rue Voltaire. You want the third floor, Madame Martin. What do I say? Anything you like. Just get a good look so you can confirm that she's the woman you picked up this morning. Well, I recognise those legs anywhere. Then I can go home. Yes, you can go home then. All right then. Hello. Who are you? And what do you want? I'm the director of the Folie Bergère. Oh, don't be so stupid. I'm not in the mood for jokes. Uh, Miss Danguette sent me. Oh, can I help? Oh, no, you can't. Oh, dear. I think you've got her on the wrong night. That's show business for you. This is Inspector Maygrave. Well, definitely her. You're quite sure? I wouldn't forget a pair of legs like that on Christmas Day. Will there be a reward? I doubt it. But I must have missed at least two fares. But just get home to that wife of yours you were so keen to get back to. So there's no reward? Scram! Yeah, happy Christmas to you too. Your husband will be here in an hour. So you keep saying. Perhaps you'll be more talkative in his presence. I've told you everything I know. So, despite the taxi driver recognising you, you're still denying that you went to the garden all this morning. Look, do we have to keep on going over all this? Until you tell me the truth. You can't seriously expect me to believe that it took you two hours to buy three tins of sardines you didn't need, a bit of ham and some potatoes. Oh, I'm very careful about what I buy. God knows I have to be with what Jean earns and that girl to keep. How do you explain the cab driver recognising you? Oh, there are thousands of women in Paris who look like me. Look, I've told you everything I know. Your men have searched the flat and found nothing. So if you don't mind, I'd like you to go now so I can get ready for my husband. Sit down, woman. You're not going anywhere till I get a few straight answers. Now, tell me what was in the suitcase. What suitcase? I don't know what you're the talking about. The one you bought this morning. Let me tell you what I think happened. <sighs> don't have any choice, do Let's I? Let's start with your so-called insurance man. Strange, isn't it, that no one else in the building received any visits from him. Lucas checked. Well, they don't like me. Your visitor, will call him the insurance man, came to collect something that you had. You told him that whatever it was, was hidden under the floorboards in Colette's room, and you explained that you couldn't get it until she was better. A few days ago, he returned. You told him that Colette was still laid up. He became angry, probably accused you of lying. Colette heard you argue and became upset. Fearing discovery, your insurance man agreed to leave, but he no longer trusted you. And discovering that your husband would be away over Christmas, he hit on the idea of visiting Colette's room dressed as Father Christmas. You should be in films. Of course, whatever it was you had never was under Colette's floorboards. And this morning... Hearing about Father Christmas's nocturnal visit, you panicked. Fearing another, perhaps, violent visit from your insurance man, you took whatever it was out with you. 
You bought a cheap suitcase, transferred your booty into it, and then deposited the suitcase in left luggage at the Gare du Nord. You think you're so clever, don't you? I'm right, aren't I? Well, I'd have a left luggage receipt, wouldn't I? Not if you posted it to yourself. Oh, you hate me, don't you? I understand you. You've no idea. I tell you what shocks me most. Not what you may or may not have done, but your coolness. For the last couple of hours, we've been together in this room, and you've not flinched at a single question. Even the imminent arrival of your husband doesn't appear to bother you.、Well, I've done nothing wrong. You were Monsieur Laurier's mistress, weren't you? I worked for him. But he used to visit you at night before you were married, didn't he? Well, what of it? You won't tell Jean, will you? He's your husband. It was before we married. Look, Jean doesn't know. He's a good man. I don't want to hurt him. What is it, Lucas? He's outside. Torrance spotted him watching this flat. Who's outside? Father Christmas. Surely you knew he'd be back. Do you know who he is? Monsieur Laurier, your insurance man, isn't he? He thinks you have something which belongs to him. It's not his property. Perhaps we should leave so the two of you can sort it out. Come on, Lucas. I think he may well be armed, Chief. Well, I'm sure Madame Martin is perfectly capable of dealing with him on her own. Don't go. But a few moments ago, you couldn't wait to get rid of me. Please, he'll kill me. He's already killed one man. So, you're going to tell us what this is all about? You'll stay. Is there money in the suitcase? Just under a million francs.、Ah. Well, it, it, it's mine just as much as his. Where did it come from? One of the customers, Monsieur Boissy. What happened to him? Monsieur Laurier killed him. Why? Well, for the money, of course. He's ruthless. Look, you mustn't let him in. Lucas, be a good man. Keep an eye on the stairs. Yes, Chief. Julian Boissy fancied me, and I kidded him that if he had enough money, I'd go away with him. Weren't you married to Jean?、Well, only for a couple of months. Look, I, I hate being poor. I thought it would be different after I married Jean, but it wasn't. So the idea was to kill Boissy and go off with Laurier. Julian Boissy was a dirty old man, like all men, like yourself, most likely. One afternoon, he turned up at the shop with the money. I was at lunch. When I got back, Laurier was cramming Boissy's body into a trunk. He had strangled him. I didn't know Laurier was going to kill him. I, I thought, I, well, I don't know what I thought, but I, I didn't think he would kill him. Did you blackmail Laurier? No, he would have killed me. So why did he disappear? Well, I persuaded him that he had been seen disposing of the body. So he gave me the money to look after and fled to Belgium.、Mm. He expected to return when the fuss had died down and take me off to South America with him. And that was five years ago. I wrote to him, post restant, told him I was being watched and followed by the police, and, and, and that Monsieur Boissy's body had been found. Of course, it was a lie. You police aren't that clever. So why did he come back two months ago? Oh, he was broke. The idiot could have come back. Any time he wanted to, no one was interested. Not even his wife. So you kept the money safe all these years without your husband or anyone else suspecting that you were rich. Oh, it was a comfort knowing the money was there. Will you get me out of here? What about your husband? Oh, to hell with that idiot. And Colette. Oh, she's not my child. He can look after her. Lucas. Yes, chief. Take her down to the station. Oh. Then we can charge her and Laurier with the murder of Julian Boissy. You've arrested Laurier. On his way here. Oh, you, you tricked me. You made me think. Take I... her away, Lucas. Oh, you, you don't, don't touch me. Come on. No. No. What's going on? Colette, is she all right? Oh, what are you looking at, you interfering old bitch? It's all your fault. If it hadn't been for your stupid infatuation with the inspector, no one would be any the wiser. Come on, let's go. Oh, you bitch! Oh,
is still up. What's happened to her? Who? Colette. I saw Lucas lead that woman away. Oh, she's asleep. Paul is still with her. What's going to happen to her? I don't know. Can I come in? Wish you could come and stay with us. <clears throat> I'd look after her until something more permanent is sorted out. Well, we'll see about it in the morning. But for the time being. <laughs> well, it, it might be the most practical solution. What with Jean working and Paul the way he is. Mm. If they agree, I'll arrange for Colette to be brought over in the morning. Oh, May Gray. Yeah. This is the best Christmas I've ever had. Can I come in now? It's freezing out here. Of course, my dear. Yeah. Of course. Douce nuit, blanche nuit, scène en rêve, aujourd'hui. In Maigret's Christmas by Georges Simenon, adapted for radio by John Petherbridge. Inspector Maigret was played by Barry Foster. Madame Maigret by Pauline Yates and Lorraine Martin by Jane Slavin. Sergeant Lucas was Joseph Bennett. Mademoiselle Doncoeur, Maria Charles. Colette, Kira Johnson, Paul Martin, Christopher Wright and the cabbie Malcolm Ward. Maigret's Christmas was an independent production by Unique Broadcasting for BBC Radio 4. Directed by Andy Jordan.